All right, welcome everyone. So happy to have you here, Raz here. Anna here. Tuning in from Transylvania, the land of Dracula. We're super excited to have all of you on board for our first ever virtual Miro user group for Europe, Middle East and Africa. Super excited to have everyone in here. Thank you for taking the time to join our session. We have a jam pack of, of knowledge here ready to share with you. So just confirming, is, is there anyone that cannot see my screen? I'm, I'm showing the mural board, just making sure everyone is, is <coughs> let us know in, in the comments if you, if you have any is, issues with this. All right, mm -hmm. awesome. So um, once again, super excited to have everyone in here. Uh, we just want to go through some housekeeping items before we kick off. Uh, for this uh, session of the VMUG, we're going to be talking about brand sprints uh, along with the awesome folks from Agency in the Wild, Simon and Stu, which we'll uh, hand uh, over the virtual microphone to. A few words about the virtual Miro user groups. They're meant to be monthly sessions where people come together to kind of harness the power of Miro and uh, explore ways where both power users and beginners or people who are actually just discovering Miro can kind of learn uh, how to use it, how to use all of its amazing features and share some some stories from uh, their remote adventures. So uh, we don't want to take too much on the intro. We just want to get started and trying to, trying to get to the main presentations for today. Um, we'll, we're going to be your hosts. We're going to be walking you through all of the uh, steps uh, of, the, of the session. We're going to be keeping tabs on the time. We're going to be doing some nice exercises together. And uh, yeah, let's kick start. Um, we want to take a few seconds to introduce ourselves. As I mentioned, my name is Raz. And, Anna. and uh, we run a product consultancy called Just Mad. We joined forces a couple of years ago and we help companies innovate better and faster. Most of our work is uh, delivered in a workshop format. So I guess that Miro played a crucial role for us in delivering our work to our clients as most of them are remote. So thank you guys very much for joining in. Um, now I'm just gonna pass over the mic. Virtual to, mic. Virtual mic to Stu and for the intro. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, my name is Stu, uh, and um, here's Simon. Simon, hello. Hi, there's Simon. Simon. And uh, yeah, we run a similar agency. We're we're part of the remote revolution. So uh, you know, our, our name says it all. We believe that all good things are wild and free, and uh, we run design sprints and product uh, digital product design uh, remotely, mostly using tools like Miro uh, for clients all around the world. And from my se self, hello everyone, um, Simon. Um, like Stu mentioned, uh, we run design sprints and brand sprints. We use Miro all the time. Uh, prior to joining Agency in the Wild and founding Agency in the Wild, I worked as a creative director in an innovation agency here in Vancouver, Canada. And then prior to that, I worked at Electronic Arts for many years on the FIFA franchise. Um, uh, leading an innovation team. And then prior to that, I work at multiple uh, in, uh, startups here in Vancouver. So after that, I'll pass to Jäger. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, my name is Igor. Um, I'm leading brand here at Miro. And I'm really, really excited to welcome all of you here. Um, I was uh, the one uh, who, who led the product uh, project of making real-time board Miro. So if you have any questions <laughs> regarding that, if you're not happy with that, so it just, you can address it to me. But uh, that was like incredible journey. And I would say this was the most rewarding project in the whole of my professional career. So uh, I will be happy to share like our insights and key takeaways and how we did that. Yeah, everyone joining, I, I really think it's a great opportunity to kind of extract a lot of knowledge from people that use Miro every single day and kind of harness it to various uh, degrees and to various complexities and various types of, of projects and, and uh, industries. So make sure that you leverage our, uh, our Q&A section to get the most out of these sessions. Uh, just as a primer, before we uh, move forward, We'll be using the Zoom chat to kind of collect questions. Uh, we'll be here to kind of summarize them and kind of pick the ones that are uh, most popular. And uh, yeah, let's kick start our journey in today's session. Yeah, before we jump into the icebreaker, just like some tips here. Uh, in order to duplicate, you have here the commands for the voting session. You have here the small thumb. I'm sure you now on the screen, probably you can see my mouse. 
uh, for the pointer um, versus pan, here you have the pointer in order to select items. And undo, obviously, you have the commands over here. So whenever you feel the need, you can just come back at these tips in order to make sure that you do the right actions. Exactly. And as we mentioned right before we kicked off, we have this small mm -hmm. icebreaker. Uh, we already see some really cute icons yep. added here mm -hmm. in the map. So uh, if you didn't get a chance yet, uh, you can uh, turn over to uh, Miro, open the, the board that has been shared with you, and jump in and use the left side uh, toolbar to grab, click on the dots. As you can see on my screen, go to the icon finder, type in something that represents you, and find that icon and place it in the map on the map in the appropriate area where you're joining us from. And if you're joining from anywhere from the Americas or uh, Asia Pacific area, use the, the box on the right. So uh, we're gonna give you around one minute to do so. We're gonna in the meantime, we're gonna be looking at what mm -hmm. others have put in here. So add your icon and then drop a comment again from the left side panel telling us what your name is, what your company, what company you're representing, and uh, what exactly are you joining us from. So Go ahead, I'm just gonna start the timer for one minute real quick. Let's go, everyone, switch to Miro and we'll see where everyone is from. So, Despite my accent, I just want to make it clear that I'm actually half Danish, half Scottish, but grew up in Holland. So I'm going to cheat and I'm going to put all those things on the map to represent them. Because <laughs> I feel like that's only fair. But then I don't know whether that someone put that, win I was going to use that window, but I think someone put it in the wrong place. I'm going to put it right. There we go. It's pretty cool to see that we have folks from Italy, from Romania. We have people from Estonia, obviously Russia. We have some folks from the United Kingdom. I like this feature. <laughs> Made our life so much easier. <laughs> so much buzzing going on. We have people from Ukraine. Nice. <laughs> our neighbors. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. So colorful. Awesome, everyone. Uh, Thank you. I, I was looking the link to the hi <laughs> hi everyone. I was looking to the for the link uh to the mirror board in my email, but I, I couldn't find it. Anyway, I don't wanna delay it. Um I'm actually from Venezuela, but I have lived in Argentina for seven years and I'm currently in Brazil. So yeah, all of those places. Okay, uh, nice. I'm gonna share the mirror board right now with you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll add the, the link to the mirror board in the Zoom chat so everyone can mm -hmm. find it. Awesome, thank you. Amazing, okay. This was our, was our icebreaker, everyone. So yeah, you can find in the Zoom chat, you can find the link to the mirror board and I just added it right now. Amazing, now, we're tuning in for our first presentation, which will be held by uh, by Yegor as part of the head of brand of Miro. He's going to talk a little bit about their experience with uh, the brand, brand spin and their uh, their amazing project of rebranding real time board into what today is Miro. So Yegor, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to hand it over to you. And Thank you very much. Okay, I'm taking over. Uh, and folks, don't forget to write down the questions in the Zoom chat. Exactly. So any questions you might have for Yegor, use the Zoom chat to add them there. We're going to compile them and ask Yeah. Them. Do you yeah. see my screen? Yes. Yep. Cool. Um, okay. Um, yeah, my name is um, Igor. I am leading brand here at Miro. Uh, feel free to connect with me uh, on LinkedIn if you have any further questions afterwards or if you, if you want to um, uh, learn more about our experience um, in, uh, in making rebrand fully remote team uh, across four offices uh, in three time zones 
uh, in six weeks. Uh, so I'm pretty happy to, to share our experience with you. Um, yeah, just me. Let, let me start. Also, I put some of the uh, links um, for... Uh, um, I will put my timer, right? For ten. We started, yeah, we already started the timer. Uh, Yegor, don't worry about that. We're gonna ah, okay, add okay. Minutes. Yeah, gonna add two more minutes to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, here here are a few few links uh, you can read afterwards uh, about like our, our reflection on, on this uh, amazing experience. So uh, I've got only ten minutes, so I just wanted to be to be short um, uh, and like the the. the one of the key questions uh, is like recently uh, been like popping up in this um, um, marketing space. Uh, uh, like, why actually tech companies start <clears throat> investing in in brand? Uh, and we recently had like in June um, a meetup uh, during San Francisco Design Conference, and we invited people from Dropbox, uh, Cloudflare, and Pinterest to to share their vision for that. Uh, and like, there are a lot of, you know, uh, reasons actually for that. Um, so right now building a great product is not, uh, enough anymore, uh, because like you need to create meaningful experience and value to people. And you also need to stand out from other products, from media, from Facebook, from, uh, Google and like all sort of battles for, for your attention. So like how, how you, and like from business perspective, there is another angle. And I really like how Collins, who, who did um, uh, like recently a lot of rebrands for, for tech companies. Uh, and while rebranding uh, Spotify, they said that a great product wins early adopters, but a great brand wins the mainstream. So if you want to, to, to grow really big, so you need to shift your focus from like you're actually building the product and like investing uh, a lot in, in, um, in the brand. So that was actually one of the, the reasons why we start thinking about uh, this. And um, a quick story of Miro uh, rebrand. So uh, why actually to rebrand a, a hyper growth company? Um, because we were like growing 300% year over year for the last four years and we've been like uh, doing pretty well. But uh, still with, we with uh, facing a lot of issues. The first uh, issue is consistency because real time board, different people uh, were spelling in a different way. So it was like real time board, three words, like in a, uh, separately, real time board, like uh, all capital, and etc. So we wanted to have the, the name uh, consistent. Second, it was long. So people were making an acronym out of it, RTB. The third, it was about competition uh because uh when we only started uh back in 2011 we've been the first product uh at the market and we were uh creating this product category uh but then the market is web was becoming more and more hot and so uh a lot of products uh, start to appear and for some reason uh like gem board storm board concept board uh side board whatever board uh, and so for some reason, they decided to, to pick up the, this part board in, in their name. It was like really hard for us to, to stand out from them. Um, and we wanted to, 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 to have something uh, different. Then uh, the, the, the first factor I would say it was about positioning. So, uh, and our product vision, like our company vision is to empower teams to create and big things by providing them the best solutions for collaboration. And at some point we will be thinking, okay, maybe in five or 10 years, we will not be uh, only developing boards as an, our main you know, product. Maybe we'll think about something else that will help us to, to achieve this mission and to, to create value for our customers. And so we've been thinking that we need a name that could be more abstract and could be more kind of umbrella name for, for, for the whole universe of our products. And the, the last uh, thing was about the, the narrative. So what the actual story we, we, want, we want to tell. So uh, because previously it was like pretty straightforward. It's like, hey guys, this is online whiteboard and just go and like, you know, 
do your work. Uh, whereas when you start building brand, you need to come up with a more um, high level and more uh, inspiring narrative uh, if you actually want to, 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 to go big. And so for us, it was like also a starting point, point for that. So how did, <coughs> sorry. So how the process was structured? Uh, we started with a brand sprint uh, and it was like a really, really important part of our process is to align key stakeholders around the, our mission, vision, our goals, our aspirations and like what we want to achieve. Then we broke down the whole process into six um, uh, uh, weekly sprints. Uh, so the, the first week was devoted to uh, research and working with contacts. The second was uh, about strategy and brand platform development. The, the third week was developing um, uh, creative directions. Then uh, the next week was uh, actually going deeper into and picking up one direction and uh, fleshing it out. And uh, the final week was about uh, finalization and, and handover. So everything was done. Um, in six weeks and it was like pretty pretty challenging especially taking into account that it was uh, around four offices uh, in three um three time zones um so what were uh because it was like really really challenging project uh what were the key takeaways we we get from there uh so first is the the, um, the amount of work will be always more than time so just define your what we call minimum awesome product um second is you should definitely rely upon uh your team and delegate uh as much as you can otherwise you will just you know die uh the third is that some risk can be not manageable at all so just believe in best but be prepared for the worst um creative process actually can be predictive and manageable and it was like for us for me personally it was a uh, great surprise uh, and help really, really shout out to our um, design partner, um, Dutch design from Fruchtlace and help us to, to feel confident in that. Um, over communication is better than miscommunication. Um, you can't finish rebrand, you can only put it on hold. And the final uh, takeaway that is my, my personal meditation helps um i would like to go to another uh yeah so if you haven't seen uh this uh did this video uh like how it turned out to be uh, um by the end of the day and like what what story we, we wanted to, to tell with uh our rebrand this is like really really great example to that combines you know the, the visual part and the storytelling part uh, and also representing our like vision and aspiration um yeah just it's like really really short Yeah, um, I would say that Miro, this rebranding project would never be done without Miro itself. So we've done basically everything there, starting from the brand sprint, we kicked things off, we collaborated uh, like every everything, uh, all, all six weeks we've been collaborating uh, on the board. We've been having um, like daily stand-ups, we've been having midday reviews, we were having uh, weekly demos, uh, all, everything was was done um, um, in Miro, uh, and like just to to give you um, a, a quick, um, uh, yeah, quick quick, um, quick view of like how our board looked like. It was like a really huge board, 
uh, with all the, the, the process, so like with the visual research, with the strategy, uh, with all this, you know, comparison of, of different uh, benchmarks, uh, the brand platform with the uh, creative, um, creative directions um, discussion. Uh, here's a sneak peek of some some of the concepts that were not uh, that didn't uh, didn't go to 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 the work. Uh, all the explorations about the illustration style, all the um, logo variations, uh, the, the the final uh, deck for 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 the for the company and for the uh, working group. So it was like really really single source of truth for us. It helped us to, to communicate and give feedback really easy to, to each other. Uh, and it became as like, yeah, single source of truth and uh, one, uh, I would say, um, single, single, single workspace where we, 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 we've done all our work. Um, I think that in, in a nutshell, that was, that was it uh, in all like that 10, 10 minutes that I had. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, I know that it was short. I'm, I'm really happy to answer. Okay, good. Thank Thanks you. for your attention. Thank you very much for the presentation. It was very insightful and actually quite curious to see the whole process. Uh, we have here two questions from the audience. And the first one is, why Miro? Obviously, apart from the fact that you work there, <laughs> why would, why would, why would, why did you call, call it Miro? <laughs> um, uh, Juan Miro is a um, Spanish painter. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe you know uh, him. And he was uh, one of the closest friends of uh, Salvador Dali. And he was known for, <clears throat> uh, for visual experiments, for self expression, for. <clears throat> And for for visual experiments and for pushing the boundaries, and we've been uh, looking for a name that could represent our our DNA and our company, and could be not just you know random for words, as like a lot of startups in the Silicon Valley just pick up their names, but it should be it should mean something. And when uh, we've been working with naming agency, and they proposed Miro, we said yes, that that's it. Uh, they definitely represent like who we are, and it sends like clear message to uh, all our current and potential uh, users. Yeah, okay. I, I guess this kind of answers like the second questions that second question that we have here, like how <coughs> rebranding and how what was the general uh, feeling about the new name? Yeah, how was how was the response of the the whole? Yeah, I, I would say that uh, if you plan to to make a rebrand, just if you can avoid um revealing the name before you reveal the whole uh, identity just go for it because like we first uh because it was like really cross-functional project uh it involves around like 65 people from the, the the whole company and uh at some point we we wanted to keep it secret uh and then to to like you know reveal uh, the, the, the the holistic story but because uh, a lot of people were involved we said okay it, it's already leaked uh, at some point so we need to make the presentation of the name first and it was made in like black and white uh, um, kind of slide deck and the, the reaction was from like I would say neutral to negative because people were re like really uh, <clears throat> they stick to, to real them or they really love uh, the name uh, in, in, in the company and but the, the next stage when we presented the, the, the new identity, we presented the brand story and we did it like in a really uh, visual way. So there was a lot of excitement about that. So um, I would say it's like really important to, to, to put everything like together and not only the name itself, but the, the story uh, behind it. Yeah, so uh, we just saw comments. Thank you, uh, thank you, Yegor. Uh, and uh, Eugene said that Mir means peace in Russian. So. Someone asked if, if there's any connection to that. Is there any intentional use of Miro? And kind of like, is that connected? Kind of, you, you kind of bring peace to the battlefield of collaboration, end quote. There, there is another meaning of Mir in Russian. Uh, it means world. Uh, 
so it, it wasn't like connected with, with that but uh, then we start digging deeper in different um, languages because it's not only about Russian language it's also about French language it's also about uh, Spanish language uh, and like in, in all these languages uh, we, we found like really good um, uh, connotations uh, for, for, for mirror so it's, it definitely give us um, a lot of you know room for for playing with, with the kind of visuals and like all these uh, images all right okay amazing Awesome. Thank you, Igor, so much for the presentation. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, if, if, uh, if anyone still has any questions, feel free to reach out and post them. You have a dedicated area right on the right side of uh, Igor's presentation. Feel free to add your questions even after the event. So feel free to do that. And uh, now it's time for the people of the hour, Stu and Simon of Agency in the Wild, to walk us through the world of um, Miro's brand sprint template and sh give us some of their remote magic. Stu, Simon, feel free to take the screen and take us on a journey. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, I will take the screen. Can you see my screen? We can. Hey, can you hear us okay? Yeah, Beautiful. you can see my screen, all good? Perfect, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Jaeger, for that. It's uh, really interesting. And, uh, you know, obviously we're here to share the, our passion for branding. But um, just before we launch this, I can show one of the really cool things about Miro that I love is that when you zoom out, and obviously we saw the incredible uh, work that was done to rebrand Miro. Um, I love the fact that you can create this sense of scale, a bird's eye view of the entire process. And I think as much as we want to talk about this brand sprint process, we also wanted to sort of showcase, you know, how we like to use Miro and organize our information as an agency, which is why we created the longest uh, template that we could, just, you know, because we could. Um, so don't worry, we're going to go through this at lightning speed. We're not actually going to try and cover everything in detail, but we wanted to really like park our entire process here so you guys can hack away at it, hopefully send us some, some suggestions and help us improve it. Uh, but we're going to walk through it end to end. Um, but we're going to start at the beginning, which is why I put a little starting point here. So um, we say, as, as um, Raz and Anna said, like we're all about design sprints and the word brand and sprint don't normally go together. In fact, it, I'm sure you're all familiar with the problems and the frustrations that we uh, came up across, uh, you know, pretty much our entire career so far is that the traditional branding process is like really long and uncertain usually. It can be really slow. And ultimately, uh, it's often done behind a magic curtain only for a magic reveal to happen at some point. And that reveal can actually be pretty bad and it can sometimes be completely misaligned with the original intention, which is a problem because we now live in a world uh, where speed matters and where you constantly need to solve for real user needs. And so we um, thought to ourselves, well, there's got to be a better way. And um, focusing on the user needs is, is core to how we work as design thinkers. So um, in terms of branding, um, we were looking for someone who shared that philosophy. And Marty Neumeier has, has, has done a lot of work with agile branding. And he said something which is, so, which is so true, which is actually a brand is not what you say it is. It's actually what your customer says. And so you can go and you can uh, you know, market yourself and you advertise yourself. But it's not until your customer actually agrees with you and says that you're a great lover that you've really created a brand that resonates with them, right? And so our job really is to create brands that make customers fall in love with it and become evangelists. And we need to do that at speed because the world is constantly changing and sprint processes are the, the way to do that. And so before we launch into the, um, the sort of key question that we're as an agency working on, which is, how do you build and validate brands at speed? One thing that I wanted to make really clear, and one thing I, that I personally love about the sprint process is that everybody is a designer. The idea that if you're an engineering or an account or you work uh, down at the front desk, that you're not either creative or have a voice is, is, is completely wrong. And the best thing about sprints is that they allow people to come together quickly to solve big problems at speed. And uh, throughout this presentation, we've also added a couple of little uh, like nuggets of uh, wisdom, hopefully, 
And then there's links to the actual web links. And that's another great feature of Miro is that you can embed content from the web directly into the platform. So uh, before I hand over to Simon, uh, just give you a little overview. We're going to be talking about the three hour brand sprint here, which is available as a template from the Miro library. And we're going to quickly walk you through how we used it to shape the, the core fundamentals of our brand in three hours. So over to you, Simon. Thanks, Stu. So as Stu mentioned, that's just the fact that you can get this template from Miro and it's already set up for you. It's, it's one of the things that we love about Miro. It just boosts your productivity to another dimension. Um, so with that being said, um, let us explain you why the brand sprint. Uh, the brand sprint is great when you want to align with your customers or with your team. It's just, it's a great way to time box uh, time in your day um, and, and avoid context switching and have everybody on the same room to discuss your brand. So it's, it's just a very powerful way to kickstart your brand initiative. Now, in terms of the structure, this is, this is something that is, it will take your brand conversation from zero to a hundred, because as you can see, you will start thinking about your 20 year roadmap and your 20 year roadmap, what that does and what it does for us really well with clients is it allows us to start thinking big picture and having everyone align on the big picture because sometimes um, we've noticed even though people have been working together for five years one one stakeholder wants to go let's say the x way and the other stakeholder wants to go the uh, y way for instance so that's something that is really powerful for you uh, to start the conversations early now in terms of the next exercise is your what how why and this is uh, brought to us by Simon Senek and the, important of the, the importance of this exercise is that your what, so the thing that you do, it's, it's very easily, uh, it's easy to copy, but your why, it's really hard because if that's your mission, that's what drives you to do it, uh, so your motivation. So identifying that is extremely valuable. Then we move to the top three values. And what's beautiful about this is that with your values, once you identify those values, they will guide you. They will help you hire people. They will help you make decisions. They will make you write your copy. Um, so that's, that's incredibly important. Then you take a break. And remember, this has only been an hour and 15 minutes and you've already started uh, very important conversations. Then you move towards your top three audiences. And like Stu mentioned and uh, Igor mentioned, it's incredibly important to start with your user. And, um, and like Marty, uh, the quote that we had says, it's not, a brand is not what you think it is or your customer or your company, it's what the audience says it is. So identifying that audience is really important. And then you move into your personality as a brand. And that's what's going to determine your visual look, your tone of voice, things like that. And then lastly, your competitive landscape, identifying your competitors and finding a, a good void in the market is really important. So starting that early is fundamental. Now, in terms of the first exercise, which is your 20 year plan, we will give you a, a quick uh, note that's happened to us with uh, running dozens and, uh, of, of these sprints is that what we found is customers were telling us, they said, hey, we." It's, it was, they were getting it frozen when, when they were thinking about the 20 year plan because they said like, we don't even know what's gonna happen in five years. We cannot even think what's gonna happen in 20 years. So they asked us to move it to 10 and we had a couple of requests with different clients about this. So that's why we put it to a 10 year plan and immediately it did like a psychological effect on them where they can think about it and give us really good results. So, um, but this is our 10 year plan and what I can tell you from this is, the, obviously it's not now, but um, you, what you need to identify is what's the most important thing that will move the needle for you uh, right now and for your brand. And for us, was obviously win the sprint. And ultimately, all the way at the end, uh, we want our goal is to have a fully decentralized agency. So um, this is just something that we wanted to share with you. 
it's a very important exercise. It will help you think long term. And back to you, Stu. Thank you. Um, I just realized because we've locked the board, there's a lot of uh, extra little boxes. So um, I don't know if someone could unlock it. Or I guess I have to. But um, so really going going along at a pace now, you get the picture. The why is the most important. It's why we do things. It's unique to each individual company. And um, in our case, we went through a process of exploring different um, uh, possibilities. And our outcome as a brand was really, we firmly believe that all good things are wild and free. So how we achieve that is that we believe that technology and design set us free. And, and so Miro, again, is like one of those tools that's just fundamental in setting us free. And obviously good internet is another thing which isn't uh, available to everyone, but um, fundamental again in our process. And by, by having these tools, it allows us to bring people together to solve big problems at speed. And that's how we do things. We use pro design sprint processes and great tools to deliver our value. And our value at the end of the day for us is we want to be, you know, the world is in a massive, um, obvious, obvious, like obvious digital transformation. So how can we use creative technology to build better products? Because ultimately, unless you build the products, your ideas are worthless, to create amazing brand experiences that are constantly evolving and that are inspiring people to become evangelists and to push the brand forward. So having the, these three things defined really clearly gave us a purpose as a, um, as a company. Thank you, Sue. And with those, <clears throat> identifying your why will help you really define your values because once you, once you identify what you believe in, then these this, uh, values come up easily. And so our values, just so because I'm aware of our time, wh what we want to tell you about this is that this is what drives us uh, when we want to communicate, when we need to take a decision or say we don't agree on something, we go back to these three values mm -hmm. and we say, okay, will this give us autonomy, freedom, and does this put the users first? And um, have all of these values in mind because we're going to show you some of the results that, that our brand has and things that we've done. Uh, so keep those in mind. Okay, great. And yeah, and so now we go into our audience. And I think, I guess, in, in terms of my experience and our experience working with a, a lot of brands, you know, it's, it's really about creating a connection with a tribe that you want to inspire. It's not really any, any more about thinking about, you know, someone who's got a Volvo and 2.4 kids. It's better to think in archetypes. Um, ultimately, um, we, we live in a world where archetypes kind of are so embedded in our culture because they've been around for so long that we build Harry Potter out of it, we build Star Wars out of it, and we build great brands. And the broader you start, the more, um, the, the more epic your story is. And then let the data guide you to be very specific and personalized, contextual to the individual user. And that's the power of data now. And so from our perspective, you know, our top audiences um, are, you know, fearless leaders who have the, uh, who are, I guess, senior enough to make widespread changes in the organization. We want to work with explorers and change makers who want to challenge the status quo or launch new ideas. And then we want to work with young talent or entrepreneurs who are bringing fresh new ideas into the world. And again, we, we use decentralized tools because we want to connect with people wherever they are. There's so much potential now to take these uh, methods and, and these ideas and to bring them to places that never had access to this. And it's exactly what's needed in a world that desperately needs change fast if we're going to avoid um you know what looks like a kind of uncertain future the nice. in terms of our brand personality um what what is beautiful about this exercise is that it it allows you to quickly come together and as you can see this was our early discussions um we we were aligned in most things but some things we were in 100 percent aligned and so if we go to the next one um, the final ranges, keep those in mind because that's, that's what happened. That's the beauty of this exercise. It aligns us towards uh, just a, a middle point that we felt comfortable with and that pushed the brand towards the values that we believe in. And the nice thing about this exercise is that it's going to start influencing your visuals, your tone of voice, and how you present your brand to the world. Stu, I think you're muted. My doggies were making a noise, so uh, I was muted. 
Um, so yeah, I was just saying lastly, most importantly, or uh, importantly is, you know, where do you sit within the competitive landscape? So, um, you know, we defined our axes and uh, we found ourselves really close to just mad. Obviously we positioned ourselves a little bit further up in the uh, quadrant, but, um, but really we share the same thing, which is, uh, and, and Miro, I guess, shares, shares the same value, which is like, we're part of this remote revolution. We want to deliver value-based work, which is sprint-based, and we want to deliver it remotely. And that differentiates us from traditional agencies or even freelancers that are selling time, you know, uh, work purely based on an hourly rate or things like that, or on a retainer with timesheets and all that kind of stuff. We deliver value and we deliver a fixed process and we stand by that process. So, um, you know, we, we're proud to be part of this remote revolution. We, we, we sort of see everyone in that quadrant as like our brothers or sisters. And, uh, and, you know, and that law of attraction, I think, is really, uh, this year for us has really worked in bringing us together. I, I've been using real-time boards for years. I have, like, almost 90 boards now. And, uh, and I think just that love for Miro, like, brought them into my life. And now suddenly just mad. I'm working with them. And they share a lot of the same philosophies. And I copy loads of their ideas now. So it's just great that this revolution is kind of bringing together a lot of, like, love and, uh, and a lot of great, um, you know, energy. And so... Um, we're going to zoom out a little bit and we, we have only five minutes left. So it's going to be a whirlwind, but basically this three hour brand sprint is fantastic. But as Simon said, it's only three hours. So what we're trying to do is go, okay, well what now? And that's really like our quest as an agency and what we're delivering for our um, clients is how do we go beyond the three hour brand sprint and actually deliver this brand. And, and I'm going to zoom right out and let Simon take over, but this gives you a kind of like a high level overview of you know this process and now we're adding on as the actual execution of uh, the brand thanks Stu. and we'll, we'll keep this high level um you can come back and just go on detail in in each step but what we want to say here is that the three brand three hour brand sprint is great to kickstart conversations but then as eager said and, and as we all know a brand that's just the beginning, that's just a early strategy, but a brand has a research strategy that it has to be more in depth, like your, uh, cost, your, your canvas, your more in depth values and personalities. Uh, you, you have to also think about the creative direction, the art direction, um, sometimes naming, and most importantly, you need to user test your brand. Uh, that's part of design thinking, that's part of philosophy. So we came up with all of these things um, as, frameworks and we use Miro to to map those frameworks and uh, user validation is super important and it's part of this framework as well and it goes without saying that all of this stuff is done in Miro and um, <clears throat> you know we're in the process of creating our own template uh, that one day hopefully will be part of the official store um, you, there's a little taster of some of the the um, templates that we've created. So we really like to use Miro to keep it on brand as well. And, and I think that's one of the powers of Miro, which is kind of why we wanted to showcase our, our process the way we've laid it out now is that you can really bring it like a really distinctive branded touch. If you uh, add extra element, custom elements, you can add all sorts of, um, you know, great um, elements into the look and feel of it to like customize it to your own brand. Um, and, and then finally I'll let Simon take over and then just to show the, the kind of results of our brand sprint, um, how our brand shaped up. And to, uh, to touch it to, to what Stu is saying, just having Miro being branded, bringing clients there, it's, it's so powerful. It's, uh, I love whiteboards and having a digital whiteboard, just it's like a whiteboard on, on steroids. So um, you can see here some of the results of our brand. And just, just to tie everything together, um, one of our values is to bring people together. So that's why pluses, you will see pluses on our brand everywhere. Um, one plus one equals 11 for us. So that's really important in our brand. Um, something that is really important as well is, is this, this idea of a grid. So you will see a lot of grids in our, in our brand. Um, and that's the, the, the reason why we have this grid is because we want a universal uh, language and the grid brings that for us uh, black and white is this idea of being serious uh, and, and, and thought leaders, but you can see with the animations and some of the patterns 
that we we also have this idea of playfulness so that's just kind of to bring everything together um but the the point here is this the brand sprint it's great for us but it's also great for our clients and we'll show you some results and i just wanted to make a pass can you hear me okay great um so we wanted to show you some of our work because the brand sprint works with lawyers we've worked with lawyers and listen if you can run a brand sprint with a law firm you can run a brand sprint with any industry so uh that's something that we wanted to share with you uh people are catching up to this agile mentality we've worked with commercial real estate uh we've worked with the retail industry obviously blockchain and technology um and even breville as well so that's just to give you some examples of people and clients we've run design sprints with absolutely and um miraculously ahead of time um that is it for us so um i think we will stop there and um we were going to talk about some of our like our learnings and do a little quick q a and, and invite raz and anna into the conversation as well definitely uh, talk well about. something that we wanted to do with this was um through our experience we found that obviously things that break the sprints things that break this idea of of being remote is obviously multitasking and we will talk rest please and, and anna please jump in anytime um what we found is that when a client comes in and 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 people in the room are multitasking it just breaks breaks the experience breaks the uh concentration and the focus obviously being on time is it's horrible um it just breaks the flow uh then obviously we you need strong facilitation people like like Anne and 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 rest it's it's the, you need those kind of people um and then obviously having the right tech nothing worse than and disruptive than not being able to hear each other and then um yes don't don't be late that's something that <laughs> we definitely say but we wanted to open this up to you as well and we just wanted to give those points awesome that was a really really strong yeah. presentation guys really really impressive thank really you content, really great story love what you've done with your your own brand and kind of showcasing it in the, within the context of the brand sprint i think is a is a great approach and and really loving the output of of your efforts and uh yeah we're more than happy to kind of dive deep in kind of like learnings and some advanced facilitation tips just keeping aware of the time uh we'd like to address uh the questions that we got first mm -hmm. uh, i think that's just the highest priority for us right now so let me just go go on with the first one so Do you have any tips on how to choose brand visual language efficiently and do you use Miro for that? So, I uh, I'll just answer that quickly and and then pass it to Stu because this is on the top of my head. So, um the best tip that I can give you to choose a a brand visual language is to have a very strong creative direction first mm -hmm. and then use mood boards. to define the visual language and and that tie to that creative direction so i'll give you for a, an example if the story of your brand so for instance for breville the creative direction we found for this new product category um through through our discovery we the story we wanted to tell was this air particles um we live in an ocean of air was the creative direction or what we call the the brand insight and so once you have that story our visual language was really tied to that we just narrow on that and so we found these particles and we started looking for particles 3d particles and how those particles shape and that gives us the visual language to tie it to everything um so i'll pass it to stu but that just came to my head really quick yeah no breville's a great example so breville's is an australian company they actually invented the uh, sandwich toaster uh but now they're moving into air care as well And so they're based in Sydney, I'm in London, Simon is in Vancouver, right? We had a designer who was in uh, the United Arab, Arab Emirates and we managed to bring everyone together on an almost like a 24-hour work cycle using Miro as a single source of truth. And when we were just exploring those air particles, we could just throw in all sorts of references into Miro and then the designer would wake up and then he would take it and he would mix it and then we would basically like wake up grab what he did 
And then we would just literally screen record ourselves going through Miro, playing around with the particles, and then just share that video with the client. So when they woke up in Australia, they could watch a video of us talking about what we've done that day. So like Miro, uh, in fact, was called Real Time Board at the time. So, um, you know, we, it was instrumental in allowing us not only to like have a single source of truth, an amazing process, but we worked essentially 24 hours a day and did the work in like a third of the speed. I mean, a, a, sorry, a third of the time. So to, to tie it all together, definitely for visual language efficiency, uh, create a mood board with, with a strong story first, mm -hmm. then create a visual mood board that ties to that story. All right. Awesome. That's a really great reply. I'm just trying to uh, put the questions together so we manage to kind of cover them. So like, who do you, how do you manage multitasking, preparation, trips and tricks, and, and kind of uh, these things and, and the challenges? I think what, can, what makes a great facilitator? Like when, when you're facilitating your brand spins, for example, um, what would be some, some good practices to kind of like keep people engaged, how to manage this multitasking thing? So some tips and tricks on, on facilitating. Yeah. How do you stop them from you know, switching the tab to Netflix or YouTube? Yeah, like we, we, yeah, we can also chime in on this from our experience yeah. of running design sprints that like, keeping people engaged, mm -hmm. especially remote, is particularly yeah. difficult and, and challenging. So maybe you want to hear some thoughts on, on what you do. Uh, what we do as, as one of our best tricks is we always have people keep their cameras on. Mm -hmm. And whenever we facilitate, like for example, I'm facilitating Anna is kind of part of the sprint. I always try to keep an eye out for people and see whether their facial expressions indicate confusion or I yeah. see like light bouncing off their faces because they're tap switching. So I just do just, just some tips and tricks that we found super useful, like having cameras on. Anything else you might want to add to that? Yeah, I, I mean, these are things that you've actually mentioned as well um, to me, I guess, uh, offline, but really important is making sure that the client has the technology and they have the connection uh, to actually be able to have a good conversation remotely. Because as you know, once that connection drops even a little bit, it just brings a really like strong sort of almost like barrier to like genuine human connection. And you can really lose a room really quickly. And we've worked with some clients who barely had internet and it's really affected how we are able to deliver value as opposed to if we were in the real world, right? So that's number one. And then the other, the last part from my perspective is is a, and, and so I know you guys are a big fan of this as well, is make sure that they're comfortable with the basics of Miro if you're gonna use Miro, because it's, in my experience, it's amazing how uh, people get scared of, you know, basic tools that actually we kind of use in applications all day, every day, but you know, they're afraid to sort of put a post-it on there or move some stuff around. So just giving them a little bit of like a, a heads up and showing them some basics and show them, showing them that it's okay to mess up because you can do control Z pro tip. Uh, you know, it just speeds up the flow of ideas uh, a lot better. Right, and I think yeah, the preparation, sorry, sorry, Simon, a good preparation tip and trick. What, what we do is we kind of give a mirror one-on-one. -on -one. We kind of send out the videos on how to pen, how to zoom, how to create sticky notes. And then we do like a five minute session where we just tell them, okay, input your name, comment on this, uh, create a frame. So we kind of do the, this preparation beforehand, which I think is really useful. Absolutely, no, that's gold. And uh, the last thing that I wanted to say from my side is um, just setting the expectations right from the beginning, mm -hmm. it's crucial. So uh, we, we, we have a slide where we say, please, no phones, no laptops, no, no switching. Um, and the reason we say this and bring it back to the value of it is because context switching is, is incredibly uh, bad for, for the session and it lowers productivity. So just make it relatable to the customer and then they, they get it. But just set that tone from the beginning. I guess that what we do extra, we always make sure that we're very clear that the background should be quite silent and uh, we recommend them to work from a meeting room. So no coffee shops, we know yeah. with coffee grinding in the back, uh, yeah. no open spaces, you know, where people you can get really easily distracted. So we make sure that they are in a silent space. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, awesome. Thank you everyone. So we're gonna keep the questions in here. So we're gonna have access to all of these great resources. Thank you so much Stu and Simon for walking, walking us through this. Um, we're just going to take over screen so we're aware of time and finish on time. We still have a few sections to go through. Um, if possible, we'd like to share the screen. Um, Stu or Simon, if you could. I will stop sharing. Sorry, I thought you could just kick me out. But... 
No, no, no. That, I'm, we're not picking anyone out. All right, everyone. Um, just going towards the end of our, our uh, session to, uh, today, we have a share off section where um, we added some some resources that we think like, you might find useful. If you have something you want to share, whether your template, the same way the folks at the agency in the wild shared some some previews of them, their templates. Mm -hmm. We also have our own remote design sprint template. We created this after many many iterations. You can find a link and uh, and uh, grab a bit, a bit here. You're gonna see it's really similar to the brand sprint template, like really well explained instructions. So if anyone's interested in like learning more about how to run remote design sprints, make sure to use uh, this template, which is available in the Miro library. If anyone else wants to add their creations or anything they've created in Miro, make sure to jump in and, and paste it here so people can find you. Um, we also uh, had uh, put together some, some killer Miro features that will help you in your brand sprint. Um, these include the timer, the voting feature, the fact you can create these custom templates, uh, the, you can digitize physical sticky notes, and a lot of other features that you can check in on this, uh, on this screen right here. So make sure to read that when you're ready to run your own brand sprint. And now, as any uh, good designer would, uh, would, it, would, would suggest, feedback is really, really important to us not just us as hosts and the folks at Agency of the Wild as presenters or Yegor from Miro, for everyone. We would really, really appreciate if you would jump into Miro and take a minute to look at the two uh, boards that we've created. Um, if you look at my screen right now, all you have to do is drag the dots on the right and just place them in the appropriate position in the four quadrants. So depending on the level of knowledge that you gained in this session and the degree of knowledge application that you think your learnings had, feel free to to place your votes and i'm going to start a quick timer for let's say 30 seconds. 30 seconds 30 seconds everyone to kind of place your votes this is really helpful for us we really appreciate if you can uh give us so i'm starting a timer now come on folks place your votes <laughs> If you feel really strong about one quadrant, you can even add two or three dots. <laughs> we have plenty. I love all this buzz going on on the screen. This is amazing. I mean, this oh, is wow. excellent. <laughs> The feedback is really good. Nice. <laughs> and now for a little more in-depth uh, piece of feedback. Um, if you look at the, the screen beneath, we have the accolades, improvements, and suggestions quadrants. Uh, in the same manner, we would like to hear what do you think went well, what could be better, and uh, what should come next, what topics you'd like to see in these mugs for the following uh, sessions. Just grab a sticky note from the left and just drag it in the appropriate uh, quadrant and just double double click or double tap to add your, your comments. Uh, let's all allocate 30 seconds for that as well. Start. A few more seconds. More visuals. I should be able to lock my computer while presenting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, put in your final ideas. Amazing, everyone. Thank you. And now, just as we're wrapping up our session, we're almost at time. We can't thank you enough. We want to make one last announcement. Um, we have the Miro platform contest that has a deadline on December 1st. 
So if you're uh, if you are creating an app that will be available to three million people, uh, you're you're in for the run for some really nice cash prizes and the ability to uh, show people what you've made. So if you click on the link here on the bottom of this uh, this this screen or on the top right uh, item here, so like a mirror logo here. If you click on it, it's going to open a tab. We can read more about the platform contest. Make sure to read it. If it's something you're interested in and win some sweet cash, or go in and leave Or maybe you know more. someone who's interested. Yeah, share, sharing is caring. So definitely if you know someone who has developed, like maybe scratching their own itch, have developed some sort of uh, app that is uh, integratable with Miro, that would be amazing. Make sure to check that out. And without... Anything else to say? Thank you so much, everyone. We really appreciate you joining us for the session. Keep an eye out for future VMUG uh, episodes. December is off because of holidays, obviously. So Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy, Happy New, Year. New Year, and all of that. And we'll see each other back in January 2020. Merry Thank Christmas. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Happy Holidays. Bye. 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 Yeah. Happy Holidays. Bye-bye. Bye.